G'day everyone, we're counting down the top 10 AFL Grand Finals. We're up to number four and this one is an absolute nail biter and another classic. It's Geelong's very narrow win over St Kilda in 2009. Well, a fantastic season 2009 and these two teams really set the tone. They'd played a classic encounter in round 14 at Docklands both of those teams incredibly going into that game undefeated. St Kilda emerging in front on that occasion by just six points. So when they met up again on grand final day, uh, it was a fair chance it was going to be a ripper. And so it was. The big difference this time was the conditions. Uh, Docklands, of course, played in pristine conditions under the roof. Grand final day was a shocker weather-wise. Uh, persistent rain, drizzle, cold, wet, bit of wind. Uh, it certainly didn't make for attractive football. Nonetheless, though, these two teams delivered in spades. This is one of the toughest, most brutal uh, grand finals in the true sense of the word. Just lots of contested ball and hard hits and uh, huge tackle numbers. But still some really good football played and two sides that were within touching distance of each other the whole game. Started out, uh, Geelong made the early running. They certainly settled quicker. Um, first goal of the game to Max Rook after nailing Raf Clark in a tackle. Uh, Cam Mooney added another one. But once that had happened, St Kilda really settled down and dominated play for the rest of that quarter. To the extent they ended the term um, 14 inside 50s to just two for Geelong shortly before quarter time that was. Uh, plenty of scoring chances created. Unfortunately, already the Saints beginning to waste plenty of them. Uh, Lenny Hayes on top in the middle. He was terrific in that first term. 11 disposals and five clearances for him. Jason Graham also winning plenty of the footy. So St Kilda went into quarter time leading by only two points, a lead that perhaps should have been a bit more. And that would become a bit of a recurring theme. Geelong's best period of the game probably coming in the second quarter. They had a run of four unanswered goals, not without a bit of controversy. One uh, shot by Tom Hawkins, which followed a, a smother on Zach Dawson, a quick hurried snap, uh, actually grazed off the post. Didn't become apparent until uh, the ball had long gone back to the centre. That was actually the incident which uh, proved the impetus for the AFL's introduction of the goal review system. Too late on that occasion, sadly, for the Saints, and the goal stood. St Kilda, though, despite Geelong's goals, was still dominating general play, and to the extent, in fact, that the inside 50 count at half-time had crept up to 37-15 the Saints' way. Um, Jimmy Bartell had been moved on to Lenny Hayes and begun to quieten his influence just a tad. Um, St Kilda... Looked in a, a bit of uh, strife, perhaps, after Geelong got those goals, but managed to hit back. Justin Kaczynski got one for them. And uh, then right on half-time, a real bit of controversy. Um, Geelong defender Darren Melbourne penalised for abusive language to the goal umpire after he'd appealed uh, for a touch ball for a goal. And uh, from the goal square, Adam Schneider, uh, seized on that opportunity, St Kilda going into the long break, now six points up. Things really tightened up after half time. Um, both sides just absolutely throwing themselves at the footy. Uh, lots of head wounds coming out of this game. Um, Brendan Goddard, certainly the worst for wear. Cameron Mooney playing a good game for Geelong. He put Geelong in front seven minutes into the quarter. Uh, Nick Rewalt properly answered that one. A really smart goal from Paul Chapman gave Geelong the advantage again. And then uh, from almost an impossible angle in a forward pocket, Lee Montagna pounced on a loose ball for the Saints and somehow managed to thread it through the big sticks. And uh, St Kilda had hit back again. So goal for goal, by three-quarter time, St Kilda leading by seven points. Uh, Geelong fearing back-to-back -back grand final losses after, of course, having blown that grand final to Hawthorne the season before. St Kilda on the cusp of perhaps their second premiership in history. So the stage was set for uh, an epic last quarter and it certainly delivered. Tom Hawkins uh, was the first goal scorer pretty early in the term, took a good mark, made no mistake from a reasonable distance out and uh, that made it anyone's game. 
Uh, it, it then went goalless for about 20 minutes, but uh, plenty of chances for either side. Some great defence by being um, shown. Harry Taylor, terrific for the Cats in defence in this game, playing on Nick Rewalt. And uh, it, it, it was anyone's game for most of that final term. Uh, Max Rook had a snap of goal to give Geelong the lead. Look for all the world like it was going through, but little Stevie Baker, that uh, dogged St Kilda back pocket, threw himself at the ball, uh, cannoned into a post, but managed to just get a hand to it and save the goal. Um, Joel Selwood had a crack at goal. He missed. Uh, that levelled the scores. So we're heading into time on with scores level and uh, a very real prospect of a draw and thus a grand final replay. And then came one of the most famous moments in grand final history. I'm sure you've seen it. Gary Ablett left unattended in the centre of the ground, sitting there waiting for a pass to launch another Geelong attack. Zach Dawson, St Kilda defender, anticipated that pass, dashed madly at Ablett and just managed to get the intercept happening. It fell to Matthew Scarlett, who had also anticipated what was happening, crept up from the Geelong defence and uh, in a moment of... Uh, Ingenuity, I guess you'd call it, a little deft toe poke back to Gary Ablett, who was able to turn around and bang it deep into the goal mouth. Cam Mooney looked uh, set to perhaps mark. He was actually spoiled by his teammate Max Rook, um, but the crumbs fell to Geelong's Travis Varco. He dished off a handball to Paul Chapman, and Chapman's snap, after hanging in the air for a fair while, split the middle. It was Geelong leading by six points with not much time at all left on the clock. And uh, there it was. Geelong managed to close out the game from there. Still a couple of chances for the Saints. A massive mark by Harry Taylor from a Geelong kick-in, which uh, might have just about made the game safe. That was effectively made safe by a uh, dribbled point from Max Rook. Ge uh, St Kilda rushed another point. And with six points the difference, uh, Geelong stage one last attack. Rook got free in the forward line, took the mark, and as he went back to kick a goal, the siren went. Uh, cue pandemonium for the Cats and despair for the Saints. So much despair, in fact, that no one actually bothered getting on the mark or protecting the goal mouth. And Rook's uh, shot actually dribbled through after the siren to record a goal and leave the final margin 12 points. Very misleading 12 points, though, because uh, this was anyone's game literally until the last seconds. Let's have a quick look at the uh, details. Uh, neck and neck for all this game. Three goals each after a quarter. Seven each at half time. Nine each at three-quarter time. The Cats just squeaking over the line. Paul Chapman, three goals for them. Mooney and Rook, two goals each. And for the Saints, just one multiple goal kicker. That was Adam Schneider. Paul Chapman, terrific player for the Cats, deserved the Norm Smith medal. Darren Milburn and Gary Ablett, both terrific. And for the Saints, Lenny Hayes and Jason Graham, their best. Heartbreak for St Kilda. They'd been so close and yet so far after a fantastic season. But Geelong managed to avenge that shock grand final loss in 2008. Last number four. I'll see you back here soon for number three.